where are we? So for anyone who has not heard of this exhibition or got no idea what they're about to come and see, how would you describe this? We're here at a very unique spot right in the centre of London at the first bodybuild museum in the world uh, of a really great magnitude. Bodybuild is an exhibition that is all about you. It's all about life. Although we have corpses on display, corpses that show all the body interior with all the muscles and nerves that we have inside ourselves. And while walking through the exhibit, they let everyone know what a wonderful and intricate machine the body is. And I'm sure visitors will leave this space with a complete different idea of the inner self. Typically people say, wow, it's so different from what I had expected. I'm glad I came and never again will I take my body for granted. Wow, I mean, what a wonderful thing for people to take away. Um, what have people's reactions been generally from um, being down here? What have you noticed? Is it has you expected or completely different? Well, I mean, Body World is now touring for almost 20 years and we have visited many, many uh, different countries and wherever uh, it went, it has drawn really a lot of interest because it is so much related to your inner self. It is about you. And uh, I mean, if you think of it, you have your body with you all your life. It navigates you through any highs and uh, deep spots. And um, But as a layperson, you never ever have the chance to really see and understand what's inside you. You typically take it for granted. You even spend, don't spend a single thought unless it doesn't function properly. And this exhibition allows you to have a very empowering experience, to experience what you are made of, and it changes your view. So, obviously down here, you mentioned already, there are a lot of corpses on display. <clears throat> Could you talk us through the process of how they even get here? Yeah, all specimens here on display are originating from a very unique body donation program that we run uh, through our institute in Heidelberg in Germany. And so all specimens are from people who have voluntarily decided during a lifetime to be part of it. And they are permanently preserved by a technology called plastination. That is a rather complicated vacuum process, but to put it very simple, it's a vacuum process that exchanges the tissue water against the polymer. So each individual cell that contained water beforehand is now filled with a silicone rubber or epoxy resin, for instance. And that runs the specimen dry. It is orderless. It more or less holds for forever. And what is very important for a kind of exhibition like this is we can put the specimen into very beautiful, dramatic, lifelike positions because that helps really visitors to have access to these kind of specimens. People might come with hesitation. They might never have been confronted uh, with the cops before. They might come with hesitation. But walking through the exhibit and seeing that it is not like in the Hollywood industry, it's not ghoulish, it's, uh, there's no reason to be creepy. Uh, even a lot of children walk through and have a great, great time uh, with the parents together and learn a lot about their own lives and bodies, um, yeah, that makes an entire difference. And how, obviously being curator, um, how do you even begin to start putting on something like this? Well, the thing is, I'm by chance married to the inventor of the technology, who is um, Gunther von Hagens, and uh, I'm working with him now for almost 30 years, and I'm the curator for all of our exhibits since its very beginning, when it started in 1995. And how long did this, obviously it's now permanent here, how long did this take to put together? Well, of course, uh, the majority of the specimens uh, were produced already quite a while ago. And uh, when I come up with an exhibition uh, like this, I see what, what's available, what do I need to tell the story, to, be, uh, to allow for a very dramatic and impactful experience and um, put all the content together. Um, as I'm doing this already quite a while and I'm a little experienced now, I need maybe a little less than a year. Okay, okay. Um, and do you have any 
personal favourites that are on display here today? Ah, oh, that is a very tough to a question because um, this is really a remarkable collection and I also know that each and every visitor has his or her favorite. Um, there's a certain kind of specimen that I really love and these are the beautiful arteries that we have on display. For instance, we have a, an entire head that just shows the arteries. It looks so beautiful like red corals but at the same time they suggest life is really fragile. So to me, these kind of specimens, they are the best representative of life although no tissue is left. Why do you think it is so important to start displaying you know, important works like this in you know, a cultural hub like London? Because lay people never ever have the chance to see for first hand what they are made of. Um, Body World is really meant pr primarily for lay people. Uh, I really want to empower them by providing them with the knowledge about their body interior to help them towards healthier lifestyles. I mean, we are body. Without our bodies, we are nothing. If it doesn't want to continue, the game is over. So it, we really have good reason to properly care for it. Um, but you can only expect people to properly care if they have the proper knowledge. And have you noticed a change from people from the beginning to at the end when they suddenly have had that change in their thoughts on their body? I have spoken to many visitors and of course we did a lot of surveys and uh, I like to refer to one survey that really moved me uh, a lot and that was a survey that took place half a year after the exhibition ended. So uh, it was checking uh, long-term commitments and indeed according to that survey around 9% claim they stopped smoking ever since. Around 33% claim they care for healthier food ever since and around 25% said they would exercise more than they used to. So this is the best evidence that it has an impact and that it is empowering people. Wow, better than any advert you can get. Um, and just last question for you. This is not the only sort of exhibition that you've got across the globe. There's some other exhibitions going on in different countries. Where could we find them if we're on our travels? Yes, indeed. We have uh, quite a few exhibits that are touring around the world. Uh, we have one, for instance, in Berlin, another one in Amsterdam. And uh, they completely differ. All specimens are unique. We never copy our specimens. Uh, ourselves so and also I like to um, come up with different angles to look at the human body for instance the Amsterdam exhibit has uh, the theme happiness you may wonder what does this have to do with body worlds or the body well the thing is you would not be able to feel happiness without your body it is created by certain structures in our brain um, but what is perhaps even more important to realize is that's not making just a nice feeling. It has an effect on more or less all bodily functions. This is the reason why you can also feel when you are happy, you know, when, when you're in love, you're, you have a straight posture, your, your eyes are bright, you feel good. On the other hand, if you have negative emotion, then you may, may feel it in your stomach, your heart starting racing, um, and yes, because of these, these uh, neurotransmitters, how they are called, they affect more or less all bodily function. And, this, and nowadays, um, scientists are aware that um, happy or people who tend to be more happy, uh, they tend to be more healthy, they live longer, they have uh, better blood cholesterol levels, they have better, uh, a better immune system. So yeah, it's a good idea to think about happiness and what you personally can do to enhance that. Amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. It's an amazing exhibition. Thank you. My Thank pleasure. You.